So most of you know that I'm suing Christopher Buzia Batset for defamation and a whole bunch of other claims. But what you don't know is that the law firm that I've retained is also suing the Washington Post and Taylor Lorenz for defamation for another case. Check this out. Taylor Lorenz, the New York Times maliciously destroyed TikTok talent agents business. Lawsuit claims. Let's read it. The woman who discovered TikTok stars like Addison Rae, Charlie, and Dixie has accused tech journalist Taylor Lorenz and the New York Times of publishing a defamatory story that she claims destroyed her business. Lawyers for Adriana Jacobs, 38, alleged in an amended lawsuit that Lorenz, who was then reporting for the New York Times, manipulated Jacobs' clients into making damaging accusations for the August 2020 article, including a claim that Jacobs leaked nude photos of one influencer to industry people. Wow. So if those claims are in there, and they can prove they're false and, you know, uh, it's going to be interesting. The amended lawsuit filed last week, about a month after a federal judge dismissed the initial lawsuit, alleges that Lorenz bullied Jacobs' clients into fabricating the claims against her. So it seems like the initial lawsuit that they had was dismissed because it just wasn't enough. And then they amended their complaint. And that one is the one going forward. Jacobs alleges that Lorenz has longstanding ties to United Talents Agency, which ended up poaching many of her clients after influencers shattered in the wake of the time story. So this is interesting because they're saying that Taylor Lorenz has this relationship with this, with their competitor. So this story may have been a way to allow their competitor to poach all of their talent. And essentially that, that seems to be what they're asking for. Jacobs is seeking more than $11.6 million in jet damages. Here is her TikTok talent roster. It's funny, this looks like Models Inc. All these beautiful, beautiful women, very diverse crowd too. A New York Times spokesperson told the Post, the judge properly dismissed the earlier complaint. We intend to move again to dismiss the amended complaint. The Post has sought comment from Lorenz, UTA, and her current employer, The Washington Post. Two years ago, my life was maliciously destroyed by Taylor Lorenz, a dishonest journalist influencer desperate for fame, Jacob said. Jacob said Lorenz's article left her personally radioactive and penniless. She said the lawsuit was part of a quest for justice, truth, and accountability. She accuses Lorenz and the Times of publishing a hit piece about Jacobs and her company Influences, which procured branding deals with aspiring influencers who were in turn required to pay rent to live in a Hollywood Hills mansion to create a minimum number of social media posts to promote the home and themselves. Influences, a now defunct company, build itself as an online creator management and influencer marketing company that at one point managed more than 85 TikTok creators with massive followings. So Jacobs had a very nice business going. And it seems like if she can prove that Taylor Lorenz and the New York Post published lies about her that destroyed her business, she may be able to get some really, really good outcomes when it comes to this lawsuit. But we got to see. We just got to see. Her roster of stars included content creators who get paid tens of thousands of dollars every time they post TikTok videos promoting brands such as MasterCard and Universal Music Group. The article, which was titled Trying to Make It Big Online, Getting Signed Isn't Everything, quoted the influencers as accusing Jacobs of locking them into exclusive contracts, promising them brand deals, only to fail to deliver and saddling them with onerous expenses, including rent and utilities. Brittany Tomlinson, also known on social media as Brittany Broski, AKA, I'm gonna chop this up, kombacha girl, accused Jacobs of failing to pay more than $23,000 that she was owed. Here's a picture of them getting on a private jet. TikTok. Jacob and influences allege in court papers that Taylor Lorenz and the Times are guilty of defamation, tortious interference with prospective economic advantage and intentional infliction of emotional distress. Jacob managed her clients while snagging them lucrative endorsement deals. Under her tutelage, Charlie D'Amelio signed on as a pitch woman for Dunkin' Donuts and also was featured in a Super Bowl commercial. So it seems like she had a very successful business and Unfortunately, because of this article, it made it seem like because one or two people may have had bad experiences that the business was a, was some type of fraud or something like that, which obviously it's not. You, you know, if you look at all the pictures and stuff, it seems like this was a thriving business. And yes, not everyone's going to have a great experience, but using one or two examples of bad experiences and saying the whole business is a fraud, I think may be a little problematic. But we'll see how the case 
kind of pans out. Ray, who recently inked a three movie deal with Netflix, signed an endorsement deal with Maybelline and Urban Decay that Jacobs negotiated. Jacobs also arranged for Tomlinson to score deals with Chipotle, Samsung, GT, Kobacha, and a Hummus Super Bowl commercial. So at the end of the day, we have Taylor Lorenz, who's had many issues, even with the Law Tube team. I uh, remember she said the lies about Tug, then she lied about legal bites. And now it seems like she's been lying about Ariana Jacobs. Why is this woman employed? How, how, like, if you have this journalist who's been caught lying about multiple people, why are people still hiring her to be a journalist? That's like the one thing you are not supposed to do as a journalist, right? Make shit up and just lie on stories and then publish them under the umbrella of the Washington Post and New York Times because what happens now the Washington Post and the New York Times is in lawsuits based on her reporting. So I, I, I just don't I just don't understand why this woman's still employed. But there may be more to it. This case was again, it was dismissed earlier. They amended the complaint. So let's see if this amended complaint survives another motion to dismiss. I'll keep you updated on the story. But I think what I'm reading now, it just it just seems it's messed up that a journalist could go and destroy someone's business like this and not report on it accurately. Like you could report, she could report, you know, hey, there are some people who are upset about the way the business is being run, but then there are some people who are extremely happy about it. So it, it seems like Taylor may have gone off the deep end to just report things that are more salacious. But again, we'll see if they're protected by the First Amendment because that's what this is all coming down to. But let me know how you feel. What do you think? Do you think that the Washington Post and Taylor Lorenz has a good case against a defamation claim because they're going to be screaming. They have a First Amendment protection, right? So I don't know. It's it's interesting. And as we see, again, with a lot of these defamation claims, it's really the same thing. You got intentional affliction of emotional distress, tortious interference, and defamation. So those are the three big things. So we'll see if this case moves forward. I hope it does because I think Taylor Lorenz has a lot of issues when it comes to this reporting. And hopefully, if this thing does win, which, I, which I'm hopeful for, then it would at least allow people to be more careful when you're reporting on things like this because you can have a real negative effect on people's lives. So I'm going to leave you with a quote from Supreme Court Justice, actually Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, William Rehnquist, where he says, speech is free, but lies you pay for. I'll see you next time.